Our words, our walk, what we believe, what we say, everything that we do is, is known in heaven. But when we push back the gates of hell, we're also known in hell. I hear it again. The devil is afraid of us. <laughs> he is. The devil has not come except to still kill and destroy. But Jesus Christ came to give us life, his life abundantly, overflowing to the full. We are blood bought and spirit filled Christians. We are filled with God's Spirit. We have so many blessings. It says, every good and perfect gift comes from above. Like everything good that comes our way is from God, the Father of lights. Every single thing that we have is good. You know, God tries to give us the blueprint that we have to try to understand and realize that if we give Him thanksgiving, thanks with a grateful heart in all things, because even if something comes your way, like sickness or any kind of COVID or whatever, we give him thanks that he's our healer and he's our shield and he's bringing us through. I have never gotten so many over the last month people texting me and emailing me and I'm sick, I have this, I have that. You know, the devil's roaring around like a lion. It's not the lion that you know. <laughs> He's roaring around like a lion to see who he devour. 2022, and it's not going to be us. We are going to rise up like never before. We're not going to read about the armor of God. We are going to stand, and when we've done all else, we're going to stand. You can't be in faith, and I can't be in faith, and be in fear at the same time. That's the number one thing. If the devil can keep everybody in fear, what faith is going to work in 2022? I was thinking the other day, like, let me think about a couple of people in the Bible that actually had it straight in front of them and they had to believe. This whole gospel is about believing. We can't say we believe and our life doesn't look like it. Amen? Amen. What about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? I'm not preaching on this. I'm just on this right now from communion. They didn't even have Christ in them the of the Lord. They, do you know that when I was preaching on Friday or Thursday or Wednesday or whatever I was preaching in Matthew 11, John the Baptist, which Jesus said is the greatest prophet that ever existed in Jesus' eyes. And just grab a hold of this. But the least in the kingdom of God, that means the kingdom is from within. The kingdom is everything that we have in the spirit. The Holy Spirit has been poured out. We have the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ is king, and the kingdom of God is within. Okay? The kingdom, John the Baptist announced, the kingdom of the heavens is at hand. Repent. Change the way you think. We're going to do something new. It's not going to look like this. Jesus announced, John the Baptist would be the greatest prophet that ever lived. He was the forerunner for Jesus coming in. He was a little strange out there in that wilderness, you know, eating locusts and not onion. He was just in the wilderness, man. He was out there in left field. But those that are lovers of Jesus Christ are also out in left field. <laughs> somebody said to me on Thursday night, there's this, there's, there's this, somebody in the Bible, I can't think who it is, it reminds me of you. I mean, the fire was burning hot where we were, meaning the spirit. <laughs> it's John the Baptist. You remind me of John the Baptist. He's just made glad because I've heard that before. He said he is least than the least in the kingdom of God. That means John the Baptist wasn't in the kingdom of God. He wasn't in the kingdom of the heavens. That only happened when Jesus Christ got poured out on the, 
on the day of Pentecost. Listen to me. Jesus said he was the greatest prophet, but the least in the kingdom. That means the one in 1 Corinthians 3 that just escaped the flames and had no fruit. Remember? And he burned up and he made it to heaven. Jesus is saying John the Baptist is still leasing in. Do you understand and do I understand what we have in Jesus Christ? we got to get spiritually minded to 2022. Our faith is a mustard seed and it's got to be exercised. Faith works through love. Through love. Amen? Amen. Amen? Hallelujah. I love that taking that communion. It just sets the, the whole atmosphere here. And it gets set up because we did something a little different here this morning. Hold on. If Satan can keep us deceived, we will be deceived. We gotta get in the game. We gotta run our race. God explains it all through the Bible how we have to get in and do our part. I'm glad I didn't have to do that. I'm glad I didn't have to get on the cross. You know? But we die every day. We die every day to our life, our own life. Amen? Amen. So just remember, Jesus said John the Baptist was the greatest. Wow. Matthew 11, 11, in verse 12. And surely I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist. But he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than him, than he. We grab a hold of that this morning. Like you can literally walk around and say to the Lord, thank you, Jesus, that you shed your blood. And that on the day of Pentecost and when the Holy Spirit was poured out, I too can receive the greatest gift ever on planet Earth. Jesus Christ by His Spirit. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit living in us. If you obey me, if, if you love me, you will obey me. Keep my word, he's saying. Why? Because he wants us to know truth. He wants us to walk in truth. He says, I have been given all authority on heaven and earth. Now go. See, he lives in us. The authority that we carry, apart from him, we can do nothing. We have to get on fire for Jesus Christ, burn away fear, burn away insecurity, burn away everything. Because when we stand up, to everything that's going on out there. Everything that's going on. Watch our words. Walk with Jesus. Be bold in what he told you that we carry. The grace of God, the power of God inside of us. The resurrection power that brought Jesus Christ from the dead. My gosh. So verse 11, we're learning this this morning. John the Baptist is least. Like when we walk into heaven, going to be hallelujah. You guys are on fire. You guys actually believed. Verse 12, and from the days of John, that's back then, the Baptist, John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent, which is us, take it by force. Within the kingdom 
kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is one that can only happen that we would have access to all of heaven. Remember, Jesus said this is the greatest prayer that we're supposed to pray. And he taught the disciples, teach us how to pray. Let the kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We have been given authority in Luke 10, 19. The trample on serpents and scorpions. Jesus is going to tell me, Tracy, you have the blueprint. Are you walking it out? I paid the price with the blood. I gave you the spirit. You have all power in you. What are you afraid of? The kingdom of heaven is when the power and the authority came to the church. The church was born and the kingdom of heaven was opened up when the church was born. Matthew 16. I will build my church. Try to tell Peter, right? I will build my church. And the kingdom, the gates of Hades will not prevail. The kingdom of heaven is the kingdom of God. It's from the beginning of eternity to the end. That was all the sections of all time. Is the kingdom of God. But the kingdom of heaven, John the Baptist was announcing the kingdom of heaven is coming. That was King Jesus that was coming to earth. This is when we had all access and power from the inside out from the day of Pentecost. The millennial kingdom, we're going to rule and reign with Christ now in the spirit. But when he comes back in the millennial reign is here, we will rule with Jesus Christ as co-heirs and heirs of God with him, with our new bodies in the millennial kingdom. He says you've been given a little now and if you're faithful, I'll give you much when those days come. Amen? Amen. Even in this time right now, that slip pickings, people can go online and watch, people don't want to gather all the time get fed. No, God wants to use the kingdom of God for within us. Amen? So we have the coming millennial kingdom. That's the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 3, 1, 2. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent. He said, change the way you think for a purpose. If you're going to change the way you think and repent and it's not for a purpose, that's what God's doing. Call according to his purpose. Remember? He foreknew us, he put us, wrote our names in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm so happy. <laughs> when everything is going south, I'm so happy that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. That's a good day. He says, repent. We want to change the way we think. Listen, we all need to repent. Jesus Christ paid the price with his body and his blood so we could do the works of the kingdom right now. He did. We need the fire of God. We need the fire of the passion for Jesus. We need the fire that nothing will stop us. It'll be that unshakable kingdom that we're doing the three weeks in. We're living from an unshakable kingdom because we live from the spirit realm. Everything that's happening now in this day is started in the spirit realm. Everything in the natural started in the spirit realm. Understand? Nothing in the natural happens before it happens in the spirit. So when we're boring through prayer, through fasting, through worship, through love, which is the strongest gift and the strongest power on planet Earth. The realm of spirits exploding through us and in us. We wouldn't have what we have on planet Earth if we would understand and believe what Jesus Christ paid for at the cross. And this year, in 2022, I'm going to break it down really simple. We're either in or we're out. There's no middle of the road. That's how simple that is. We're either in or out. If we are not wasting our time in the five-fold ministry, standing up here and empowering the church to do the work of the ministry in the knowledge of who? The knowledge of the Son. That's what we're teaching. Jesus Christ, Him crucified, and everything else to do with the kingdom of God.
God. Before he left the earth, he actually said that. Uh, and I think it's all on this page, Acts 4 9. Uh, I think uh, it's in next week. But he actually, I mean, um, all he said before he left planet Earth is that he was going to teach the disciples when he rose from the dead about the kingdom of God. John the Baptist says, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who spoke of the prophet Isaiah, by the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. <laughs> all I'm thinking is the law and in the synagogue, you know, the law and all the rules and regulations. What's John the Baptist doing? He's crying out in the wilderness. The, the, the understanding how we're repenting. Something new. He's crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make his paths straight. See, grace and truth was on its way. Amen? God's grace had poured out on us. And we're weak, he is strong. Amen? Turn, when we're repenting, turn to a purpose this year in 2022. Have a purpose. Don't let the devil steal another year. What's burning in your heart, go out and do. We're all called to the same thing. Every single one of us. Sharing the light in the dark places. We're all called to this, do the same thing. The minute somebody heard the gospel in the Bible, boom, they were out. The woman at the, wish, the, woman at the well immediately was in a city telling everybody, hey, back then they needed women speaking about God. I mean, today I'm a little bit too, but that's <laughs> what we're going to do. When you're called and you're, you know, the, the word of God is burning in your bones like fire, I'm going to stand before the Lord. I cannot be solid. Amen. Amen. Listen, the woman of the law, Jesus was hanging out with her. He was doing everything against the law, the rules and the regulations. Jesus Christ came to fulfill the law. And His Spirit does everything in and through us. Amen? Amen? All we have to do is look and honor Him with everything that we have. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So we got to be desperate in these days. we got to be desperate to know God. The kingdom is from within. It says that, you know, the kingdom of God is not a matter of eat and drink. It's not natural, is what he was trying to say. It's not anything in the natural. We can eat and drink of Jesus in his spirit and grow in his spirit, realm. Right? That's how it is. It's about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is what we are from. Anyone that is not born again, and I will do a message at the end of this message, on a call for salvation. There might be somebody out there even now that's in church and they're just doing the religious duty because they grew up in that. We know when we're born of the King Jesus inside us. We know when we're born from above. We know that old things have gone and we became new, a new person in Jesus Christ. We are a new creation because Christ lives in us. There's not, there isn't a, this is not a guessing game. We are changed and transformed by the Lord. When you open up your mouth and start speaking to Jesus and have this relationship with Him, it's not about what's written on tablets of stone and following rules and regulations. It's about the law of the Spirit inside of us. He teaches us everything because God's Word is written on our hearts and minds. It says in Hebrews 8 and 10. The old is gone, the new is come. We're on fire. We are free. We are in love with our king that we can't see. This is a little bit about the kingdom of God. Righteousness, what does that mean? Positionally, we're in right standing with God. But most people spend every day trying to figure out why they're not in right standing with God. <laughs> see, when you're in right standing with God, it's just what Jesus paid for at the cross. He could have a relationship with us. He could pour himself out in us. When we repented and say no more sin in our life, of course he knew that he had revealed himself to us. Right? But we would just believe what the gospel says. Just repent and believe the gospel. Because we have to believe the gospel. We can't even say, oh, well, I don't know, it's been generations. This is what happened to me. 
don't know my story, listen, I have a story to tell too. But Jesus is enough. We need to be so desperate to know Him in 2022 or you'll be left behind. This is the year that we have to be desperate to know the Lord. And because John 14, 26, John 15, 26, if you're taking notes, and John 16, 13, said there's probably one just like me, his name is the Spirit of Truth, and Jesus says, don't worry, this is a couple of days before he went to the cross, you're going to know me, the world cannot know me. Because I am sending the Spirit of Truth. It's not the father of lies, it's not a demon of lies. I am sending the Spirit of Truth, and everything that he will reveal to you is true. There is no lie in it. He says, I will tell you about things that you're doing now, the things that I did when I walked on the earth. He said, you will know about things to come. And that's what I'm going to be bringing a lot this year. The things to come. We can't waste on just milk. We got to want meat in the fire of God. We got to want to be transformed by God's glory. We got to be on fire. We got to live in that unshakable kingdom that Jesus Christ paid for with his blood and right here. Abuse. 
Rejection, abandonment, self-hatred, insecurity. Rejection is a big one that people say, oh, you don't know. No, I do know. The whole list, I've been through it. I've been through a lot. But it's not about me, it's about Jesus Christ. When we just believe that He's enough, when we just believe that He is enough, I used to be a people person. I know I sound like one now. And I love to get together with the body of Christ because the kingdom of God is accelerating as I come together with the true church. The presence of God <clears throat> increases. When two or three gather in His name, <clears throat> He is in our midst. There's power in two or three. Right before the meeting started, I, you know, this morning, I, I just got the panel on my mind. <laughs> I was uh, getting ready to preach. And I was really feeling stirred up inside by God. But I thought, who would just walk back there? You know, she's on our prayer team. She can't meet us because she works during the day. But when we're doing a prayer during the day, but I said, can you pray for me? And the minute that we came together, the Spirit of God accelerated like ten times. This is what we have in the Spirit realm. This is why Jesus says, never regain coming together. Because we are right now under the kingdom of heaven. Right now. Anything can happen. Even if you're listening online, welcome. The kingdom of heaven is also right where you are if you're listening online. Because the spirit realm is everywhere. You can't see it, but you've got to believe that everywhere you go, you take the spirit with you. The Holy Spirit sees everything. He's our counselor, our helper, our comforter. He does he's everything to us, in us, and through us. That's why our lives change. We believe that. Those that don't believe that the spirit can see everything and know everything, even though it says it in Hebrews 4.13, how everything is seen before God. Before I was born again, I just thought God was only in the building I was going into called the church. I didn't realize it was the church. Amen? Well, so much here. <laughs> we gotta be poor in spirit, that's what I was saying. We gotta be poor in spirit. We can't be those people, I'm just saying, to agree with people that are living a life of lies and falsehood. We have to have be more bold and with love and gentleness and humility. We can't have anger in our preaching. We just speak the truth in love like the Bible says. We speak the truth in love and let the Holy Spirit touch hearts and open up eyes. Amen? Those are the kingdom of heaven. Those that are desperate for the Spirit. Amen? Matthew 5.10 Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Righteousness, I started with that earlier. It's positional because of Jesus. But because the king, the king of righteousness lives inside of us, we must love righteousness and hate wickedness. It's the center of God's kingdom. If you want to move under the kingdom of heaven, even though we're in that error and have the power and the grace and everything that God has in the realm, we got to love righteousness. And it can't be twisted. Justice can't be twisted. Everything is connected with the gospel. We feed the poor both ways. We feed them natural food and we feed them spiritual food. We pray for the sick. We believe that the spirit realm is alive, that God is in us, with us, and through us, no matter if we see anything or not. We are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Because we are living in a culture right now that they destroy the love of God that came right from the pit of hell. The love of God is those that obey Him, those that keep His word, those that have the Holy Spirit living inside of them. That is the love of God. When he paid that price at the cross, we cannot dumb down the love of God. We can't have our own definition of the love of God. 
The love of God. For God gave His one and only Son. That's the love of God. To hang on the cross and be mutilated and raised from the dead and be ascended. And be poured out into us. That's why we live in heavenly places. That's why we're dead to sin in the life of God in heavenly places. That's why our voice and our words are spirit and they are life. That's why we have an ascended position. This is why we do. He had to do all that to get him inside of all of us. Wow. We are the family of God. Amen? Amen. I'm going to say a couple more scriptures and then we're doing three weeks on this. I know that we missed one week here, but I'll be out here on January 30th with a band called Ahba all night with Revelation 19 Ministries. January 30th, 6 o'clock. Be, you know, rocking up the kingdom of, of heaven here. The, 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 you know, the teaching that we really need to be, I was thinking the month of January, man, we really need to know our identity. We gotta really exercise our faith. You know, faith works through love. We gotta put our love on. We gotta not get mad about everything that's going on because then God can't use us. You know, we can see with our natural eye what's going on in the world right now. And if you have the spirit of the living God living inside of you, you can really see it God's way. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> We gotta love one another. We got religion out there. We have the culture out there. We have people that are so broken, and we're carrying all of God inside us. We gotta help the broken, the sick, the abandoned, the rejected. We gotta have such a heart for the world like Jesus did. He had a heart for the world. He sat with the sinners. And brought the kingdom of God to all. He told his disciples, bring the kingdom of God. Bring the kingdom of heaven. He's bringing the Holy Spirit to all of us. This should be encouraging us, not making us feel lousy. I mean, we, we can't look back. If Apostle Paul looked back, he couldn't keep going. we got to say today is a new day. Righteousness. We have to love righteousness. The reality of the kingdom of God, we are under God's rule and the lordship of Jesus Christ. He is full of joy. We are full of joy. It says if we remain in his love, our joy will be complete. Even if we're persecuted for righteousness sake. We love righteousness. We love justice. We won't be persecuted if we're not into righteousness. The king righteousness, what Jesus Christ said. It's not a new gospel. Oh, there's a lot of the false gospel out there, but there's no new gospel. It's the same gospel for over 2,000 years right now. The whole book points to Jesus. Genesis to Revelation. Can I hear an amen? We have joy when we know we are right standing with God. We have joy when we know that the peace of God has come to us. Because we're all the body of Christ now. We're one new man in Jesus Christ, the Jews and the Gentiles. We have the peace of God. We have the grace and the justification by the blood. And when you know it's not any other way, you have peace. Not the way we act. We have peace because of the blood of Jesus. We're standing in right standing with God because we believe everything that He did. And then our joy will be complete as we remain in His love. The kingdom of God is the sphere in which God exercises his authority. Jesus said, I have all authority on heaven and earth. Listen, the kingdom of God is the sphere in which God exercises his authority so that he may express his glory for the fulfillment of his purpose. None of it is our purpose. Everything, when you want to live in the kingdom of God and understand the kingdom of God, the invisible realm, the spirit realm, you have to sell out for Jesus Christ so he can reveal things to us. You have to sell out. Listen to this, Hebrews 12, 10, and 11. I, I want to just keep on going, but I know, you know people got to go to lunch. Listen to this. He, this goes with the peace. Hebrews 12, 10, and 11. For they indeed for a few days chased us and seemed best to them. 
Because discipline church comes from the Lord. He wants to set us on the right path. Amen? Guess what? I discipline my kids. I've been disciplining them in the way that they would know what right is. He wants us to know what right is when we get off. But he says this. I love it. He says, but he for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness. We want more holiness in the body of Christ. Now no chasten, chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, after it, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So not all will be trained by it. Only those that want to be in right standing, not only positionally, but in their lifestyle. Amen? We want to be trained by righteousness. Amen? We want the Holy Spirit to be poured out. So if you guys want to come up with Jeff, we'll, we'll end here in a minute. Um, you know, play a song. And, you know, we, we just want to, I'm going to do a little tiny salvation message because we're hearing our mind and I don't want to stop having people understand what it means to be born again. I know that when I was 17 uh, in Wildwood, you know, out, you know, with my girlfriends and there'd be somebody that wanted to share the, the word of God with me and they, they would ask me, are you born of God? Are you born again? I was like, it's hot. I mean, sometimes I'm born again. Well, we're first born of the flesh and then we're born of the spirit. There's definitely a birth that happens in the inside. God somehow... We can't see it because that spirit realm, the kingdom of God, is invisible. So somehow when we repent, means we've got to change the way we think. It's not about religion. It's about a person being poured out inside of you to spend eternity with him and be his hands and feet and mouthpiece while we're here. It's one that wants to fill us with power. To be born again, again, we have the same power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead. We have the grace of God. We've been justified by faith. This is that we put all our faith in what he says. The only way we become born again is that the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to ask him right now, for watch watching online, to open up your heart and just receive God to come in. Don't look at what we do. We all come in and messed up. He pours himself in us when we are messed up, messed up, rejected, and, and self-hatred, insecurity, abuse. God is a holy God, a God full of love, kindness, grace, and mercy. Come on, listening today. Say, I'm afraid what's going to happen in 2022. My job is getting scary. You know, what's going to happen in this nation? You know, you might be just... Something horrible might have happened to you. God is a loving God. God is love. God is the King of Peace that wants to come in. He's, he's peace. He wants to come in and help you get through your life. But you must repent and change the way you think. You must say, God, take away my sin. See, when He shed His blood at the cross, the Holy Spirit picked up His blood. And Jesus ushered it into heaven. He carried his blood into heaven and said, It is finished. It is finished. Every single person on planet Earth can be spent knowing that they're saved and spent eternity in heaven. And it's so simple. Maybe your life has been awesome forever, but mine wasn't. I needed a Savior. I needed somebody to save me from myself. We hide sin. We Hide our hurts and Jesus wants to bring us everything out of our heart. You know, all of our roots get broken under the grace of God, no matter what has happened to you. John 3 3 7 says this Jesus answered and said to Nicodemus, that's who he was talking to, most assuredly I say to you that he was a, a beautiful man of God. And when Jesus walked on the earth, he was following all the rules and regulations when he saw Jesus in so much power. He saw Jesus like doing these signs and wonders. There was something on Jesus that he saw, even though he was a, a man of faith and believed in the law. 
So he met Jesus during the night. And Jesus was so real with this man. He said, well, most surely I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You will not see the kingdom of God is all around us. The kingdom of God, Jesus Christ, and his spirit is everywhere around us, but until he comes inside, you can't understand spiritual things. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2. He said, Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So I rules and regulations here. <laughs> he said, water and spirit. What does that mean? Well, he said, I've given all authority to me and to me. To me. Be baptized in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But we go in the water. It terminates our own life. Good morning. 